This teaching you're about to listen to was preached by Jagedis Sunday E and recorded live at God's Family Bible Church, Trinidad. Jagedis Sunday E is the general coordinator of Arabs of Revival Ministries and the School of Discipleship. He is also the missionary pastor of GFBC Trinidad under the leadership of Pastor Abology Akimbo, the general overseer of God's Family Bible Church Worldwide, Palm Coast, Florida. Listen and be transformed. Our Father, tonight we thank you. We thank you for what you did for us. What an action. You took our sin and you placed it on Christ Jesus. And then you placed his righteousness on us. So he became sin for us and we became the righteousness of God. Now we are acceptable. Now we stand in right relationship. Thank you, Father. And Father, we believe what you have done. And so we boldly declare tonight that we are the righteousness of God. We boldly declare tonight that we are what we ought to be. That we are proof of God. We are acceptable to you and that we are in a right relationship with you. Father, tonight as we humbly approach your wall, we receive accurate knowledge. We receive precise knowledge, understanding of your righteousness tonight. We pray, Holy Spirit, that our mind and our heart will be enlightened tonight. Even by you as we look into the world and by the word of the Lord tonight sinners will be saved by the word of God tonight the sick will be healed by the word of God tonight the captives will be set free by the word of God tonight the weak will be strengthened and encouraged the church of God will be edified Jesus will be glorified thank you father and I want you to say loud amen amen glory be to God God bless you may have your seat once again thank you uh, for joining us uh, in today's service and those of us joining us online thank you so much can you please do me a favor invite your friend invite your colleagues invite your neighbor and let us study God's word tonight I promise you they will thank you deeply after tonight's service all right so tonight is a bible study so get your bible get your rights and material and let us launch deep into the word of God tonight we'll be looking at awake to righteousness that's the topic of tonight bible study awake to righteousness now that is Paul's clarion call to the church at Corinth first Corinthians chapter 15 verse 34 that is where I took uh, the topic of today's Bible study from first Corinthians chapter 15 verse 34 so this is Paul issuing a call to the church at Corinth the Corinthian church the believer and he said to them verse 34 awake to righteousness and do not sin for some do not have the knowledge of God I speak this to your shame alright so we need a con contest we need uh, some background uh, knowledge of information so that we can understand this call tonight and so let's quickly do that. Let me give you a context, a background to this verse, all right? So Paul uh, founded uh, the Corinthian church, the church in Corinth, uh, during his second missionary journey. And Paul was there for one and a half years, ministering and teaching the word of God. Of course, as you know, persecution arose, he was rejected, and then he moved to Ephesus, all right? And so from Ephesus, he wrote uh, First Corinthians, uh, what we call Epistle to or an inspired letter to the Corinthian church. So why did he write this letter? All right. While he was in Ephesus, the news, the report that he got about the Corinthian church was not a good one, was not an encouraging one. At that time, pay close attention, the Corinthian church was, was facing myriads of problems, issues, issues of division. One will say, I'm for Paul. Another will say, I'm for Apollo. Another will say, I am for Cephas. Another one we say, I am for Christ. All right. So this is, was a church rift with division. Of course, worldliness, carnality, sexual immorality. You know, in First Corinthians 6, 
Paul was addressing the issue of a man who actually took his father's wife. So that was going on in Corinthian church at, uh, during this time. There was pride, there was abuse of spiritual gift. That is why Paul wrote extensively on uh, uh, how to oppress spiritual gift. There was disorderliness in that church, abuse of the Lord's Supper, and of course, hostages and hostages. All right, pay attention to this. So this was the background. This was going on uh, in Corinth, uh, in the church uh, in Corinth. And when Paul, the f- who, who planted this or got this news, he decided to address uh, this myriad of problems or issue that the church was facing. All right. And of course, uh, I want you to pay attention. So he wrote this corrective epistle that we call First Corinthians to address these specific issues that I just mentioned about. Pay attention to this. So, how did Paul rebook and correct them? Of course, he wrote to rebook them, he wrote to correct them, he wrote to set them uh, astray, to straighten them up. Are you paying attention? He wrote to restore orderliness. He wanted to restore righteousness to the church. He wanted them to be what they ought to be. Alright? So, he wrote to them. So, first Corinthians was written as a rebook and also as a correct letter to correct them. So, how did Paul do it? What was the focus? So, the focus of Paul, his primary way of doing it was actually uh, to begin to teach them about doctrine of righteousness. He began to teach extensively on doctrines. Not only that, Paul spent time to remind them, uh, like you read in 1 Corinthians 6, 9-11, to he took time to remind them that they are righteous. He remind them that they are washed. He remind them that they have been sanctified. They have been justified. They have been cleansed. These are people not living rightly. Are you paying attention? These are people that were acting like unbeliever, carnal, immature. But Paul spent time, look at the way he wanted to bring them to order. He reminded them of the fact that they are now righteousness of God in Christ. He reminded them that they are acceptable to God, approve of God, and in right relationship with God. All right? Now, that is not what you will think of how to rebook and correct a church like that. But Paul knew something which we are going to study tonight. Now, why did Paul do that? Because Paul knew that wrong living always stems from wrong belief and thinking. Because Paul knew, pay attention today, that righteous living is always produced by you believing right. Alright? So that is why Paul made them to understand that guys, no, you shouldn't be acting like that. You are righteous. You are cleansed. You are washed. You are justified. You are sanctified. Now, because Paul knew that once they are preoccupied with their new status, once they are preoccupied with the truth that they are righteous, in Christ, they will begin to live righteous. Do you understand? So, in the last uh, 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 chapter 15, 1 Corinthians 15, 34 that I read, Paul now issued a call to them, a clarion call. Paul now say, guys, after he has written uh, for 15 chapter in verse 34, 1 Corinthians 15, he said, guys, I went to righteousness. All right? Awake to righteousness. So what does that mean? What does that mean? So that call today, a clarion call to awake to righteousness is for us today. It's for all believers today. Are you paying attention? That is why we want to examine it. So what does it mean to awake? That's what we are going to consider. Because the call is that awake to righteousness. So what does it mean to awake? All right. And he said, awake to righteousness. We need to have a right understanding of the righteousness that Paul is asking them to awake to. Because as we go in this study, you will realize there are two kinds of righteousness. Are you paying attention? So Paul told them, awake to righteousness. What kind of righteousness is he talking about? What is that righteousness that they should be awakened to. So that is important. So we're going to look at what that means. Of course, we're going to look at what does it now mean to awake to righteousness. 
Paul, in concluding his letter, he told them, guys, I want you to awake to righteousness. What is Paul communicating to us today? And why is it important uh, for the church of God, for believer, to awake to righteousness? And how do we actually awake to righteousness? So very briefly, I'm going to uh, answer this question from the word of God. Are you ready to learn today? This is Bible study, so let's learn. We are students of the word of God. So what does it mean to awake? Let's start from that. Let's go back to that verse. First Corinthians chapter 15 verse 34. Awake to righteousness. A clarion call to the Corinthian church. A clarion call to us today. Awake to righteousness. The word awake there in that Greek. I want us to look at the Greek meaning. And then we look at the dictionary meaning of the word awake. It's important uh, for our understanding of this call to awake to righteousness. So awake is the Greek word eknefo. Eknefo. What does it mean? Now I want you to get the picture of it. So the word eknefo means to return to oneself from drunkenness. Pay attention, it's a very interesting word. This Greek word uh, is only used one time in the entire Bible from King James. That's the only time you see the word eknefo, and it means to become sober. Metaphorically or figuratively, it means to arouse oneself out of stupor. Now pay attention. You know, a uh, drunkard, someone who has come under the influence of alcohol, who has drunk, uh, 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 who has drunken himself to stupor. Such a person has what we call, is in a state of reduced consciousness. The person is no longer conscious. That's where the next day you tell them how they vomit all over the place. They are looking at you. Uh, they say, are you sure that happened? Or you reminded them the next day of all those stupid things they said. They said, did I really say that? Because as at that time, they were in a state of reduced consciousness or even in a state of unconsciousness completely. They have what we call mental dullness, all right? If you ask them a uh, question here, they will answer with Z, all right? Because they are in a state of stupor. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So to awake means for such a person to come back to his senses. That's what it means. To come back to a state of consciousness. So the word eknefo means to wake up or to arouse yourself from your stupor. From your state of reduced consciousness or unconsciousness or mental dullness. Just like when the influence of alcohol has worn off from a drunkard, he, he will come back to his senses. Isn't that? He will come back to full consciousness. So to awake in Greek eknefo that speaks of a drunkard that has come back to his senses. A drunkard that has come to a full consciousness. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So when Paul says, awake to righteousness, that begins to give you an idea of what he's talking about. He's saying, awake to full consciousness of righteousness. Are you paying attention? So that is the Greek meaning. Let's look at the English meaning. I check out the English meaning here. It means to rouse from sleep. When you say awake, you rouse from sleep and then you become conscious of your environment again. It means to become aware and cognizant of someone or something. It means also to be completely conscious. It means to be fully alert, to be mentally perceptive and responsive. So when you look at this, so when we say awake to right Righteousness, it means that you become aware of righteousness. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Now, you're going to uh, grasp that as we move on, but just a prelude, all right? So, I believe you understand what it means to awake now. It is to uh, return to your senses. It is to become fully conscious. It is to become fully aware and alert uh, to something around you or to something that has happened to you. Glory be to God. So, what is righteousness? What is righteousness? Of course, uh, for us to really understand, because this is important to me in this story, all right? So I'm going to do a brief synopsis or summary of what the New Testament teaches about righteousness. This is important for us to understand. Because when we talk of righteousness, at times uh, the definition we have in mind does not align with the teachings of the Bible. Pay close attention tonight as we do a brief synopsis of what the New Testament teaches about righteousness. The word righteousness, you see it in uh, King James, 92 times, the Greek word 
dikaiosune, dikaiosune. Now, what does that mean? I'm going to read to you some uh, meaning, but of course, you know, you have to uh, understand the context before you apply a meaning. But uh, uh, broadly speaking, dikaiosune, righteousness, in the New Testament means rightness or correctness of thinking, of feeling and acting that is only conformed to the will of God, to the word of God. In other words, it means to, 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 to think right, to feel right, to live right according to the will of God at all times. Are you paying attention? It means at all times, when we check you, you are thinking something that is right. All right. When we check your emotion, when you check your feeling, it is right. And when we check your behavior and action, it is always right. <laughs> How many of us know that is impossible for any man? Only one man has ever attained that kind of righteousness. And that is God himself in the flesh. The person of Christ Jesus. But that is what righteousness is. According to God's standard. It means you are thinking right all the time. You are speaking right all the time. You are feeling right all the time. And you are acting right all the time. All the time. Alright? But then righteousness, the Kausune also means a state of him who is, uh, who is or what he ought to be. Alright? So when you are what you ought to be, then we say, oh, that is a righteous person. Alright? We're going to understand that as we move on. It also uh, implies to a state of being innocent, a state of being faultless or guiltless. And of course, this is important. It also refers to, righteousness refers to a state or condition of being approved of God, or being acceptable to God, having a right relationship with God. That also is another meaning of righteousness. And tonight, as I talk about righteousness, that is the way I want you to see. It's a state of being acceptable to God, a state of being approved of God, a state of being in a right relationship or standing with God. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Second Corinthians 5, we read it earlier. While we are praying, let's jump back to it. Verse 21, Amplified Classic Edition. Don't forget, we are looking at Paul's call to the Corinthian church to awake to righteousness. And we have understood that to awake means to come back to your full consciousness. Alright? It means to uh, arouse to your senses again. Alright? So, we are looking at what righteousness is. Verse 21, Amplified Classic Edition. For our sake, he made Christ, that is, God made Christ virtually to be seen, who need no sin, so that in and through him, that is, through Jesus, we might become endued with view as many him, an example of the righteousness of God. And then look at the definition of the righteousness of God, the explanation of the righteousness of God. He said, what we ought to be. So that is the definition of righteousness. Approve of God. Acceptable in right relationship with God. So tonight, when we talk of righteousness, what uh, we are talking about is being what you ought to be, being approved of God, acceptable to God, and in right relationship with God. Are you paying attention? Is that taken? All right. So don't forget, I said I'm going to do a brief uh, summary of what the Bible teaches about righteousness. So let's jump into it. We're going to read a few passages, and I want you to follow me very closely. Now, the scripture teaches there are two kinds of righteousness. And please, you need to understand this. There are two types of righteousness in the Bible, and we're going to see there. One, we have what we call God's righteousness, all right? Or what we call the righteousness of faith. So, on one hand, we have God's righteousness, and it is also called the righteousness of faith. On the other hand, we have what we call man's righteousness, or some uh, Bible writer refer to it as self-righteousness, or you can call it the righteousness of works. Are you paying attention? For us to truly awake to righteousness, we need to understand the kind of righteousness to awake to. Is that okay? On one side, there is righteousness of God. On the other side, there is man's righteousness or self-righteousness. So what are you to awake to? Are you paying attention? We are talking of awake to righteousness. Paul called to the believers at Corinth. And this is God's call to us in this our year of restoration. But then, what kind of 
righteousness are we to awake to? Is it God's righteousness or is it man's righteousness? So let's try to understand these two kinds of righteousness. What are they? What, how are they different uh, from each other? Are you ready to learn tonight? So let's jump into it. We're going to read a few passages and then we are going to uh, deduce uh, some facts, some truth from them. Romans chapter 10. We are starting with Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. We're going to do a lot of reading. It is Bible study. So let's study the Bible. Romans chapter 10. I'm reading the first four verses. I would like to read in Amplify. Romans chapter 10, 1 to 4. Amplify. Awake to righteousness. What kind of righteousness am I to awake to? There is God's righteousness. There is man's righteousness. So Paul writing, brothers and sisters, my heart's desire and my prayer to God for Israel is for their salvation. For I testify about them that they have a certain enthusiasm for God. They are devoted, they are zealous, but not in accordance with correct and vital knowledge about him and his purpose. So you can love God, you can be devoted to God, and yet you lack vital, correct knowledge of God. Alright, but still now, Paul says, for not knowing about God's righteousness. So that is one kind of righteousness, and they call it righteousness, which is based on faith. Are you paying attention? So, that is the first thing I need you to pay attention to. God's righteousness is based on what? Faith. Not faith in yourself, but faith in who? In Christ Jesus. And seeking to establish their own righteousness. That is another type of righteousness. Their own righteousness. That is talking of men's righteousness or what we call self-righteousness. And look at what he say. Their own righteousness based on works. That is why it is called the righteousness of works. God's righteousness is based on faith. That is why the Bible call it righteousness of faith. Man's righteousness is based on works. The works there refer to keeping of God's laws and commandment. Talks of good works. Talk of performance. So there is a righteousness that comes by what you do. Are you paying attention? There is a righteousness that comes by you believing in Christ Jesus. Are you following me? That is important. All right. So verse 4 says, For Christ is the end of the law. The Jewish people didn't know that. It lead to him and his purpose is fulfilling him for granting righteousness. So granting. So that is not any. That is not meriting. Granting. That speaks of gift, isn't that? Granting righteousness to everyone who believes in him as a savior. So what do you learn from it? God's righteousness is based on faith. Man's righteousness is based on words. And God's righteousness is granted as a gift to those who believe in who? In Christ as a savior. Are you paying attention now? So God grants or bestow or imputed or credited righteousness to those who believe in Christ Jesus. Are you one of us? Have you believed in Christ as your Savior? Then the word of God is saying righteousness. God's righteousness has been granted to you, imputed to you, credited to you, attributed to you. Is that taken? Praise God. Hallelujah. Isaiah 64 verse 6 amplified. I want you to know something about man's righteousness. Okay, Isaiah 64 verse 6. He said, for we have all become like one who is unclean, ceremonially like a leper, and all our righteousness. Now, he call it our best deeds of righteousness and justice. Our best performance. Alright? The day you think you are best, you are excellent, you are doing very well, he said that righteousness is like what? Filthy rags or a polluted garment. So at best, Man's righteousness is what? A filthy garment. It's actually the Hebrew word there speaks of women's menstrual clothes. That's what it talks about. Stinking, smelling. That is what the best of man's righteousness is in the sight of God. Other men may clap for you. People may celebrate you. Are you paying attention? But when you stand before God, clothes with your own righteousness, you'll be stinking. Are you paying attention? 
That is important. Let's jump to Romans chapter 9. We are doing a, a, a summary, running through the scripture to understand the concept of righteousness. Because we are talking of awakening to righteousness, we need to truly understand, have a correct knowledge of righteousness. If we are going to truly restore to righteousness consciousness. My desire in this teaching is for us to restore to righteousness consciousness. Alright? But we need to understand what kind of righteousness. Are you with me tonight? Romans chapter 9. We are going to read 30 to 32. Romans chapter 9. Amplify synopsis of righteousness. That is what we are doing tonight. So from the start here, Romans chapter 9. Paul writing what shall we say there? That Gentile, that is you and me, who did not pursue righteousness, who did not seek salvation and a right relation with God, nevertheless, they obtain righteousness. That is the righteousness which is produced by faith. That is what? God's righteousness. Isn't that? Because it is by faith. So he said, people get it, not because they are trying to live rightly, but simply because they believe. Let's read further. We are as Israel. So Paul here contrasting us, uh, the Gentile, non-Jew, with the Jew, with Israel. We are as Israel, though always pursuing the law of righteousness, they are trying to keep the law, right? Did not succeed in fulfilling the law. They never succeeded in keeping all of the law. And why not? He said because it was not by faith they pursued, but as though it were by works, relying on the merits of their works. Instead of their faith, so they stumble over the stumbling stone. Now, I want to read this same passage in easy English rendition. I just want you to grasp it tonight. It is important. Now, look at it in easy, the same scripture, Romans chapter 9 from verse 30. So, we must think about what all this means. So, what are we to think about? The Gentiles were not trying to become right with God, but some of them have now become right with God. That is righteousness, isn't it? Alright? God has accepted them as right. Why? Because they have believed in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah! So, have you believed in Jesus? God has accepted you as what? Right. Are you paying attention? Even when I stumble, when I fail, God has accepted me as what? Right. Are you paying attention? That is important to take note. Let's read further. But Israel people, they try to find the law that will make them right with God, but they fail to become right with God. Why did they fail? They fail because they did what? They refused to believe in Christ. They refused to believe in Christ. Instead, they were trying to do certain things so that God will accept them. Isn't that pitiful? Alright, God offered them righteousness as a gift. They said, no, we want to, we want to hang it. Alright, we want to be right with you. We want to obtain righteousness on our own merit. And they never did that. Unfortunately, there are still a lot of people today in the church that still trying to be right with God or accepted to God on the merit of what they do. That, that is, that is pitiful. Alright, he said because of that, look at what he said, they fell to the ground. They fell to the ground. Their feet hit the stone which causes people to fall. So very briefly in this passage, we see clearly that righteousness, of course, a right relationship to God, or acceptance with God, cannot be obtained on the merit of your works. It doesn't matter how good you are. Are you paying attention? You are faithful in coming to church, in praying, in fasting, in reading your Bible, in paying your tithe and offering. You are just trying your best to do everything right. When you are placed on God's scale of righteousness, you will not measure up. Are you paying attention? On your merit, none of us can measure up to God's demands of righteousness. And because we cannot measure up, God offers it to us as a gift. And if you are going to obtain it as a gift, you have to look away from yourself. You have to disregard your own good work and put your faith only in Christ Jesus and what he did. Is that taken? 
All right, let's move forward. Uh, very important. Don't forget, we are running through the scripture to understand righteousness because Paul is asking us to awake to righteousness. And there are two kinds of righteousness. We need to understand which of these righteousness to awake to and what does it mean. I want to read Romans chapter 3. I read 20 to 24. I'm going to read in easy English Bible. Are you with me tonight? Romans 3, 20, 24. Bible study. So we study the Bible. So open your Bible. Let's read Romans 3, 20 to 24. It's the English Bible. God's law shows people clearly they have done wrong thing. Nobody, that includes you, nobody can become right with God because they obey that law. Now you need to underline that. So you don't become right with God because you obey his law. That is important. I know religious people, that is hard to believe. What do you mean? But that is the word of God. Nobody can become right with God because they obey that law. So obedience to God does not produce righteousness with God. Are you paying attention? That is important. Is it right to obey God? Of course, you should obey God for your own sake. But you cannot be accepted to God because you obey Him. Pay attention. That is important to take note. So obedience to God does not make anyone right. That is what the word of God says. Verse 21. But now we can know how to become right with God. How do we know how to become right with God? God has shown us the way that he will accept people as right with him. God has shown us the way. So let's look at the way now. This way is not part of the law that he gave to Moses. It's not part of it at all. But God's Lord and the messages of his prophet have told us about it. So what is the right way? God accepts people as right with himself because, pay attention, so why did God or why will God accept me as right, as righteous? Because Jesus Christ did what God wanted. Are you paying attention? So the reason why God accept people as righteous or declare people as righteous is only one reason. Because Jesus Christ did what? What God wanted. And so anyone that believes in Jesus is righteousness. Jesus' righteousness is imputed to them. God has said, pay attention to this now, verse 22, God has said every person who believes in Christ, it is the same way for everyone. It doesn't matter who you are. It is the same way, whether they are Jew or Gentile. All people have done wrong things. Nobody can be good and great as God wanted them to be. But because God is very kind, he accepts us as right or righteous with himself. That is God's gift to us. So God's righteousness is what? God's gift to us. So when I want to hear it or deserve it, I am insulting God. Are you listening? I am rejecting his gift. So righteousness is a gift. And why is it a gift? Jesus Christ has paid for our sins so that we can become free. It is free because he paid for it. Glory be to God. Are you following me tonight? Let me jump to Romans chapter 5 verse 19 because of time. Romans 5 19. Now look at it. He said once man one man's disobedience, that is Adam, the first man, opened the door for all humanity to become sinner. So you don't become sinner because you sin, because you do wrong thing, all right? You are born as a sinner. So we all become sinner, how? Because Adam disobeyed God. Are you paying attention? That's what that scripture is saying. But look at the other. So that is one side of the coin. Look at the other side of the coin. So also, one man's obedience, that is Jesus, opened the door for many to be what? Made perfectly right with God and acceptable, acceptable to him. So, Adam disobedience made all men, all man race, all humankind sinner. Jesus' obedience made us what? Righteous. Those who put faith in it. Not my obedience. Are you paying attention? Jesus' obedience. Amen. 
That is important. Now, as we conclude on this study, you are going to see why it is important. Look at Philippians chapter 3 verse 9, Passion Translation. We are just running through the scripture to understand righteousness properly. Because if we are to awake to righteousness, we need to truly understand the concept of righteousness in the Bible. Philippians chapter 3 verse 9, Passion Translation. So, righteousness is God's gift to us. And it is simply based on Jesus' obedience. Now, Philippians 3, 9, Apostle Paul, and I'm going to jump right in uh, in the midst of what he was saying. My passion, verse 9, Philippians chapter 3, verse 9, Passion Translation, my passion is to be consumed. Paul talking about his passion, his desire to be consumed with him, that is with Christ, not clinging to my own righteousness. Can you see that? He said, I don't want to cling to my righteousness, which is based in keeping the written law. Unfortunately, many of us in the church today, we are clinging to our own righteousness. Are you paying attention? Now, now when we stand before God, we think that God attends to us because of all the things that we have done that are right. That is you clinging to your righteousness. And don't forget, man's righteousness is like what? Filthy rags, stinking. I don't want you to do that as you pray, as we move on this year of our restoration, it is important to cling only to God's righteousness. Are you paying attention? If you cling to your own righteousness, you stumble, you fall, just like the children of Israel. Now, let's read further. Look at what Paul said. He said, not clinging to my own righteousness. He's talking about his good works. He's talking about his, he said, based in keeping written law, all his effort, his merit, trying to keep the law. He said, no, I don't cling to it. My righteousness now will be his. All right. So that is talking of God's righteousness. Based on what? The faithfulness. Do you see that in the Bible? The faithfulness of Jesus Christ. The very righteousness that comes from God. So God's righteousness is based not on my faithfulness. Are you paying attention? But it's based on who? Jesus' faithfulness. So when I fail to be faithful, I try to be faithful. But as you know, as a man, I fail sometimes. Are you paying attention? But even then, when I am unfaithful, I still have righteousness consciousness. I still stand before God and place a demand. Are you paying attention? And when the devil says, but you fail, you stumble, I tell the devil, no, my acceptance with God is not based on my faithfulness. It's based on Christ. Faithfulness. When you get that, are you listening to me? You will always approach God with boldness all the time. It is important to understand that, especially this year that we are trusting God for restoration. We need to be bold in the presence of God. And you can only be bold if you have consciousness that your righteousness is not based on your faithfulness, but based on Christ's faithfulness. That cannot be overemphasized. So, it is clear that nobody becomes right with God by simply obeying the Lord or by doing good work. Even if you are able to keep all of God's rule completely, you can still never be right with God. Now look at this, Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3, I read verse 9, easy English. I want to finish this teaching tonight, so let's rush. Okay, Philippians chapter 3 verse 9. Now look at it. Paul still writing here. I can be united to him. I'm jumping into the uh, middle of his thought because of time. Now he says, so that I am completely right with God. How will he be completely right with God? Now look at what he says. Philippians chapter 3 verse 9. I'm reading from Easy English Rendition. If I obey all. Can you see Paul here? If I obey all God's rules completely, completely. I could never, <laughs> never become right with God. Never become right with God. Only God can make me right with himself because I believe Christ. Amen. Now, you need to underline that in the Bible. That's what gives boldness to approach God all the time. Are you listening to me? That is what makes me know that God will always answer me at all times. Are you with me? Now, if you obey all of God's rule completely, you can still not become right with God. Because being right with God or righteousness is a gift 
that you must receive by faith, by believing in Christ. So God's righteousness is only based on the faithfulness of Christ, not on my faithfulness. It's only based on the obedience of Jesus, not on my obedience. God only accepts people right with him because of what Christ did. That is important. So you now have an understanding. So when Paul called the Corinthian church, they were not living right, all right? They were immature. Uh, they, they, they there were a lot of things going wrong, and Paul wanted them restored to the right track. Paul wanted all godliness restored to the church. Paul wanted righteousness restored to the church. Paul wanted right conduct restored to the church. Do you know what he told them? He issued a call and went to righteousness. And what Paul was saying, that, guy, what is wrong with you? You are a righteous people. I, I went to that consciousness. He's telling them, guys, you need to know you are washed, you are cleansed, you are sanctified. First Corinthians 9, uh, 6, verse 11. So, what Paul is dealing with is their belief. What Paul is dealing with is their consciousness. So, when he says, I wake to righteousness, Paul is saying, wake out, wake up from your stupor. Arouse yourself out of your stupor, out of your state of a uh, dull mentalness or, or reduced consciousness. In other words, Paul is say, I want you guys to become righteousness conscious. All the time, be what? Righteousness consciousness. In other words, Paul is telling them, be what? Christ conscious. Do you know why? Because First Corinthians chapter 1 verse 30 say, God has made Christ to become wisdom for all, to become righteousness and sanctification and redemption for all. So Jesus is what? Our righteousness. So when Paul say, I wait to righteousness, he say, God, I wake to what Christ has done. I wake to the truth that he took your sin. He gave you his righteousness. Why are you living like sinner? Why are you living? You are righteous people. You are righteous people. Now, that right thinking is what produces right living. Right living. Now, so let's let's jump into it. Time is going. So why should you awake to righteousness? Uh, I'm just going to give you three reasons. Because righteousness, consciousness produces righteous living. Righteous living. Now, pay attention to this. Your belief, your philosophy, what you believe about yourself, all right? It shapes, it affects, it influences your thinking. It influences your thought. It influences uh, what you say. It influences your action and your reaction. Your belief, your philosophy, what you believe about yourself. That is why in correcting the Corinthian church, Paul was dealing with what they believe. He wanted them, he was reminding them of who they are in Christ. He was reminding them of what Jesus has done to them. He washed them, he cleansed them, he justified them, he sanctified them. Can you imagine somebody that is doing wrong thing, instead of saying, oh look at you, you are, you are, you are terrible, you are evil, you are bad. No, Paul was saying, no, you are righteous, you are washed, you are cleansed, all right? He's dealing, because Paul knew, their conduct, their behavior, stem from what they believe about themselves. So it is important to believe rightly. If you don't believe rightly, you cannot think rightly. If you don't think rightly, you cannot live rightly. Are you paying attention? There are a lot of Christians struggling with sinful habit for years and years, and, and you fast, you pray, and you are still back to it. Now, you need to wake to righteousness. You need to begin to talk to yourself, I am righteous, better than this habit. I am washed, I am sanctified. That is how to break those habits. Now, you see, in my life, I could tell you things I used to struggle with, all right? I pray, I fasted, and I kept finding myself still doing the same thing, still thinking the same thing. And when I grabbed hold of this too, and I began to look at myself just as God sees me, right off, now, now, now washing the blood, cleansing the blood. Now, I think few days ago, I was thinking about myself, look at me, what has happened to me? All those things that I struggle with, they are just gone, they just fell off me just like that. Effortlessly, you can live a righteous only life effortlessly if you are conscious of righteousness that you are righteous. Now, let me give you this it is like this, all right? You wake up in the morning, you are dressed and you clean, you wash, all right? And then you put on white suit, all right? You are dressing well. How many of you know because of the fact that you are cleansed? You are neatly dressed as you go in the street, all right? And then you see people playing with mud and all that. You don't want to join them. Do you know why? Because you are conscious that you are wearing white. You are blessed. 
That is how to live a righteous life. That, that makes you, you just find yourself speaking right, alright, treating people right, living right. Why? Because you are conscious that you are right. You are righteous. You are righteous. But when you are not conscious of that, that is when you join sinners in those terrible things because you think you are not cleansed, alright? Because you think you are not washed. You are cleansed. You are washed. You are righteous. You are holy. You are sanctified. That is what Paul is saying. That is important. That is important. Now listen to this scripture. Uh, time has but I want you to see this scripture. This is one of the scriptures that deliver me. Second Peter chapter 1. Second Peter chapter 1. There is no sinful abuse you cannot break effortlessly if you are conscious of righteousness. If you are weak to righteousness, and every time you remember you are righteous. No, a righteous person doesn't talk like that. A righteous, righteous person doesn't treat people like that. And as long as I believe I am righteous and I see myself righteous, preoccupy myself with righteous. I do what righteous people do. <laughs> I talk the way righteous people talk. Look at Second Peter chapter 1. I'm just going to jump. I would have loved to read from verse 5. But I want to jump to verse 9 because of time. I want to read easy English Bible. Second Peter chapter 1. Now Paul, I mean Peter writing here. Please pay attention to this important truth. He said, but some people do not live in this good way. He was talking of the right way to live. Alright, serve God, love your brother, treat people fine. Alright, other believers uh, be good to them be hospitable. That's what he was saying earlier. He said, but how come some Christians don't do that? Now look at what he said about them. They do not think these things are important. One reason. They are like people who cannot see clearly. They cannot really see anything. Now pay attention to this. He said they are forgotten. They are forgotten what? That God has made them clean. He has forgiven them for all the wrong things they did before but they have forgotten that. Now, Peter is telling us that the reason why Christians live in such a terrible way, treat their fellow believers in a terrible way, is because they are forgetting something. That they are righteous. That they are clean. That God has forgiven them. That they, are, they have a right relationship with God. So you see, Paul and Peter are telling us, it is important to be righteousness conscious. That is what when he say, I'm way to righteousness. Be conscious that you are clean. Be conscious that God has washed you, justify you. That is going to change your behavior. If you think differently, you will live differently. Do you understand? That is why it is important for us this year. We want to live right. Are you paying attention? But it starts with us believing right. It starts with us thinking right. Thinking right. If we forget what Jesus has done, we will live just like any other person. We will just live like that. Peter said, the reason why they don't behave well, why they, they show bad manner, bad conduct, bad character, is because they are forgetting something. They are not fully conscious that they are clean, that they are righteous. Now this sets me free. <laughs> when I saw this, I said, oh, I now understand the secret of breaking any sin or sinful habit. Be conscious. Never you forget you are clean. I tell, I am clean. I'm right. No, I can't think that at all. I am too clean for that. I, I can't speak that vulgar word. Do you know why? I am too clean for that. Too clean. You've got to be conscious of what Jesus has done. Number two, why you should righteousness conscious will make your prayer powerful and effective. Of course, you know the scripture, James chapter 5 verse 16. The Hearness prayer, I'm jumping to it because of time. Uh, the Hearness prayer, the big part of a righteous person has great power and produces what? Wonderful result. A righteous person. But many of us, when we stand in prayer, we don't stand with consciousness that we are righteous, that we are righteous. That's why we spend uh, almost 80% uh, of our time in prayer begging God for forgiveness and confessing sin. That is sin consciousness. Do you know what it does to you? It erodes your confidence. Are you listening to me? Now, righteousness consciousness is antidote against condemnation. Condemnation. So when the devil condemns me, I tell the devil, you forget it. You don't even know the Bible. My righteousness is based on his obedience and faithfulness. Alright? And I just align my thinking with that. And of course, my action follow. So it starts with what you believe. It starts with the way you think. You've got to believe you are righteous. He made you righteous. He's granted to you. He's bestowed on you. He's a gift of God. Are you listening to me? Then begin to think about that all the time. Be engrossed with that or be immersed in that. Be preoccupied with that. You will live righteously without even thinking about it. 
That is the way it works. And that is why you see Paul talking to a Corinthian child, a child that is in filthiness, and telling them, I wait to righteousness. You are washed, you are cleansed, you are sanctified. Because Paul knew that is the way to restore them to right living. Are you paying attention? So righteousness, being conscious that you are righteous, will make your prayer effective and powerful. Let's take this last one. Uh, three points. Righteousness, consciousness, will also enable you to reign. You will reign in life. Look at Romans chapter 5 verse 17. Romans chapter 5 verse 17. Amplify classic edition. For if because of one man trespass, a death reign through that one, much more surely those who receive God's overflowing grace or merit and the free gift of righteousness. Have you received the free gift of righteousness? All right, listen to what he said. Putting them into right standing with himself. Reign! Those who receive the gift, those who are conscious of what they have, what happened to them, they reign as kings in life. Through Christ Jesus. Righteousness. Being conscious that you are righteous just make you to reign. You exercise your spiritual authority with boldness and confidence. Because you know, devil has nothing against you. Are you paying attention? That is important. That is important. Glory be to God. Let's close with this. How do you awake to righteousness? That is just two things you need to do. Look away from yourself. It's as simple as that. And then focus on Christ Jesus. That's the way. You need to turn. You, we pay too much attention to ourselves. We are engrossed with ourselves. Our good works. Our shortcoming. Our, no. If you want to be righteousness conscious, you've got to forget about yourself. Because at best, your righteousness is thinking before God. Like Paul, you've got to cling to God's righteousness. Are you listening to me? So my focus should be what? Not on myself, but on who? On Christ Jesus. On Christ Jesus. My focus should be on him and what he has done for me. Because that is what is going to change my behavior. If I keep... Now, if you are conscious of yourself, I mean, of all, if you have tried that, you have uh, what we call beset in sin, and you say, oh, I'm not going to get angry, oh, I'm not going to think bad thoughts, alright? The more you are preoccupied with not thinking it, the more you fall into it. Because you don't overcome sin by being sin conscious. You overcome sin by being righteous conscious. Right? So that's the way you overcome sin. Are you struggling with any addiction? Sinful Abbe, I am telling you on the authority of God's word, become righteousness conscious. Engross your mind with righteousness thinking see yourself as God see you wash, cleanse, sanctify all those things begin to fall off you can you rise to your feet glory be to God it is time to look away from ourselves it is time we fix our eyes on Christ Jesus I close with this scripture Colossians chapter 3 Colossians chapter 3, glory be to God, verse 16. He's English. You want to awake to righteousness. That is your responsibility. Paul said, awake, awake, awake to righteousness. Now that is what I've got to do. Other rendition we say, start thinking properly. I think that's 1 Corinthians 15, 34. He's the English, all right? The same 1 Corinthians 15, 34. Awake to righteousness. Another rendition say, start what? Thinking properly. That is just what Paul is saying. Awake to righteousness. Start thinking properly. Properly. You are righteous. You are holy. You are sanctified. Glory be to God. Let's close with this as we pray tonight. Glory be to Jesus. Colossians 3.16 Let Christ's message Christ's message beware always in your tongue with all the good things that it brings. And do you know what Christ's message brings? It brings righteousness to all. Hallelujah. When I'm thinking about how he washed me, how he cleansed me, how he took my sin, how he put his righteousness on me. Now listen to me. I will live right. I will live right. That is the way to our way. It is time for us to start thinking about Christ. We think on it all the time. Hallelujah. Enough of thinking about your failure. It is time to think about Jesus. It is time to feed on him, to meditate on him. That is the pathway to living a triumphant life. Can you lift up your right and say, Father, thank you. Thank you for Jesus took my sin. He put his righteousness on me and I am righteous based on his obedience. I am righteous based on his faithfulness. I am always righteous righteous. That is never a time you are unrighteous. You are always righteous. You are always righteous. Wash, cleanse, justify. It is time we begin to think rightly. It is time we begin to speak like that. It is time to begin to act like that. Father, we thank you. 
We thank you, Father, for what you did. We can never do that. We can never attain your level of righteousness. We can never attain to your standard of righteousness. But thank you because you did it for us. You gave it to us as a gift. You took our sin. You gave us your righteousness. And now we are righteous always. Help us, Father, to awake to this. Help us, Father, to always be conscious of this. Help us, Father, to always remember that we are cleansed never to forget that. We shall never forget that. Thank you, Father. We give you glory. We give you praise. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Do we have righteous people in the house? Shout amen. amen. Glory be to Jesus. Thank you. We hope you have been challenged, encouraged, and motivated to become more like Christ by today's teaching. If you would like to find out more about Errands of Revival and get additional teachings and materials for your healthy, spiritual growth, visit our website today at www.eradsofrevival.org or if you would like to enroll at our School of Discipleship, visit our website www.theschoolofdiscipleship.org.uk This teaching was made possible by the prayers and generous free will offering, donation, and gifts from partners like you. You are welcome into partnership with us today. For information on how to become a partner, please call 1-868-292-9270 or 1-868-703-5572. Or you can email us at info at erasofrevival.org.uk. Thanks for listening.